Welcome to Radioactive Decay Part 2, where we will dive into the additional higher level topics of activity and radioactive decay for non-integer half-lives. We will also take a look at two worked examples that require the use of natural log functions and their properties. Let's dig in. In Radioactive Decay Part 1, we looked at the half-life of radioactive nuclei. That is, the amount of time that it takes half of the radionuclei in a sample to decay. We derived the equation n equals n sub 0 times 1 half to the power of the number of half-lives and saw that the graph it produces is an exponential decay curve. Therefore, after one half-life, a sample of 128 radioactive nuclei will have half, or 64, radionuclides. After two half-lives, the sample will have 32 radionuclides remaining, and so on. Now, in HL physics, we will look at the more complex decay equation, which allows us to determine the number of nuclei remaining at any time, not just at integer half-lives. The decay equation is n is equal to n sub 0 times e to the power of negative lambda times t, where n is the quantity of the undecayed radioactive nuclei at time t. N sub zero is the initial number of undecayed nuclei. E is Euler's number, and lambda is a quantity called the decay constant, and t is time. As the decay constant lambda is a variable that comes up throughout this video, let's take a closer look to what it really means. The decay constant describes the rate at which a radioactive substance undergoes decay. It is a fundamental property of radioactive materials and is defined as the probability that a given nucleus will decay in a time period that is small in comparison to its half-life. Mathematically, the decay constant is inversely related to the half-life of the substance. The derivation for the relationship between half-life and the decay constant will be clarified later in this video. Notice that this is the equation for a radioactive decay graph of number of nuclei remaining versus time and is, as expected, an exponential decay curve. Let's look at a sample problem that uses the decay equation. Radium-226 emits alpha particles and has a decay constant of 0.000433 decays per year. If a sample initially has 16,000 radionuclei, how many radionuclei will remain after 3,000 years? Using our equation, n equals n sub 0 times e to the negative lambda t, plug in the values for the variables. n, the number of radionuclei remaining, will be 16,000 times e to the negative, do not forget about the negative, 0 0.000433 times 3,000. We get an answer of approximately 4,300 radionuclei remaining. In the video, Radioactive Decay Part 1, we briefly touched on activity, noting that activity is the number of decays in a sample per unit time. We will expand on that here. Activity, usually measured with a Geiger-Muller tube, is a crucial metric in nuclear physics that provides insight into the rate of decay and the stability of a radioactive material. Activity can be determined at any time t using the equation provided to you in your physics data booklet. A equals lambda n sub zero e to the negative lambda t, where A is the activity or number of nuclei decaying every second, lambda is the decay constant, n sub zero is the number of undecayed nuclei, E is Euler's number, lambda is the decay constant, and T is time. The units for the decay constant are time to the negative one power, such as seconds to the negative one, minutes to the negative one, or even years to the negative one. Rearranging the decay equation for the number of radionuclides remaining to solve for n sub zero, we see that n sub zero is equal to n divided by e to the negative lambda t. Substituting in this equation for n sub zero, the e to the negative lambda times time cancel out, and we see that activity equals lambda times the initial number of radionuclides. This equation shows that activity can also be calculated by multiplying the decay constant by n, the number of undecayed nuclei. If the decay constant of a sample is known, then its activity can then be found from this equation. In particular, lambda gives the proportion of nuclei in a sample that will decay in a short time interval. For example, if a radionuclide has a decay constant of 0.1 decays per second, then 10% of the sample will decay every second. So a high value for the decay constant leads to a high level of activity. Also notice, as mentioned in our Nuclear Physics 1 video, 
that activity is proportional to the number of radioactive nuclei. From here, the relationship between the decay constant and the half-life is not difficult to derive. Let's do it. We have already defined the half-life of a radioactive substance as the time required for half of the radioactive nuclei in a sample to decay. Therefore, n subscript half-life, the number of radioactive nuclei remaining at t one half, is equal to the initial amount of radioactive nuclei divided by two. This can also be expressed as n sub zero times two to the negative one. Substitute this equation into the exponential decay equation, then by dividing both sides by n sub zero, the n sub zero cancels out, and we get that two to the negative one is equal to e to the negative lambda t. Remember that t in this equation is the half-life. To isolate the decay constant lambda, take the natural logarithm of both sides. On the left side of the equation, we apply the reciprocal property of natural logarithms, which states that the natural log of one divided by x is equal to the negative natural log of x. This gives us negative natural log two. And now, to the right side of the equation, we apply the inverse property of natural logarithms, which states that the natural log of e to the x is just equal to x. The right side of the equation now becomes negative lambda t. Dividing both sides by negative t, we see that lambda is equal to log two divided by t, which again is the half-life, or when half of the radioactive substance has decayed. Using this equation and combining it with the simplified activity equation, a equals lambda n, we get that the natural log of two divided by the half-life is equal to the activity divided by the number of radioactive nuclei remaining. With the equation in this form, we can see that half-life and activity are inversely proportional. If the half-life is greater, there is less activity, or in other words, less decays. Now logically and mathematically, we see that the radioisotope with a shorter half-life will have a higher activity or more decays per unit time than a similar sample with a longer half-life. Whether working with the decay equation for the number of nuclei at time t or the activity equation, it is crucial to understand how to solve for the decay constant or time using the natural logarithm. Let's take a look at a problem that uses this concept as well as the product property and inverse property of natural logs. Starting again with some known values. If there is a sample of radium-226 that contains 16,000 radionuclides, how long would it take until only 10% of the radium remains? Earlier, we were given radium-226's decay constant, which is 0.000433 per year. We can also calculate that 10% of our initial sample n sub zero will be 0.1 times 16,000, or 1,600 radionuclides. This will be the final amount of our sample, n. Utilizing our decay equation, substitute in the numbers that we are given for the variables. Now we see that time is still in the exponent. We will need to bring it down into the main equation in order to solve for it. To do so, we must employ the product and inverse properties of natural logarithms. The product property states that the natural log of x times y is equal to the natural log of x plus the natural log of y. This is how we can split up the two terms that we originally multiplied and are now added together. This solution will also require the inverse property, which we previously used. Simplifying the equation using a calculator and using the inverse property yields an equation where by using algebra we can solve for t. In this case, the time that it takes radium-226 to decay to 10% of its initial amount is approximately 5,300 years. Well, that's all for Radioactive Decay Part 2, where we explored the equations for radioactive decay and activity for non-integer half-lives, taking a deeper look into the decay constant lambda. We also combine those equations to see that activity and number of radionuclides remaining are proportional. We then derived the relationship between the decay constant and half-life before seeing mathematically how half-life and activity are inversely proportional. Finally, we saw how to solve the decay equation for time, which required the use of natural logarithms and their properties. Thanks for watching.